right. Uh, once again, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you to the past two speakers. Again, remember, we all work as a team. Uh, so just uh, contact us uh, for any information and please stay in touch with your regional extension agent. They are there, local and uh, easy to get. Um, so just uh, I'm going to finish out talking about uh, the uh, uh, best monitoring uh, program that we do statewide. Uh, again, my name is Ayanava Majumdar, doctorate from Auburn University. And uh, again, this, uh, all this effort are supported by numerous funding agencies, and we are very thankful to them. So um, we always uh, talk about these uh, caterpillars that become very high in population around this time. And uh, with the increasing heat, uh, they will build up fast. Rain and low temperatures slow them down. Uh, some may get washed off, but these army worms will continue to continue to flourish uh, throughout the state. Um, and these army worms that you can see on the top, those are the four most common species that we find. They continue to move across the state uh, with storms. Uh, the recent uh, bad weather we have, uh, they all contribute to the spread of these insects. Uh, and these army worms, they lay eggs in bunches. So that's something to remember. And then the, um, the insects at the bottom are the, um, the insects that are, again, um, polyphagous species. They feed on multiple different crops and uh, they, they lay eggs singly. So, um, and uh, the corn earworm really gets bad on our crops. These are uh, insects, the borers that we find on squash. Uh, for example, the uh, the pickle worms. If you are planting late, typically you find a lot of pickle worms um, on on the crop, and then of course the squash vine borders that begin flight around February or March, and uh, one to two generations in Alabama, and they continue to the larva continues to live inside uh, all the time, and they almost never come out. Uh, but you can see the the frass, the excreta come out, and then melon worms. Um, are the ones that are kind of rising in Alabama. We've seen more and more of melon worms uh, in the several last few years. And these worms, uh, the caterpillars have the two lines um, on, the, on the top. You, they're easy to identify. They also web the leaves. So uh, none of the others uh, show webbing on the leaves or on the fruit. So you can see some of the webbing uh, when you have an infestation. So melon worms are fairly easy. Again, they the best thing to do is to plant early and get the crop out early. Um, just quickly talking about the insect uh, uh, monitoring some of the numbers. And we, again, we do this as a team uh, with regional extension agents and specialists cooperating. And we use the sticky wing traps uh, to monitor insects. And these are total numbers. So you can see the total numbers of beet armyworm on the left of your screen. And then uh, there are, uh, then you can see the averages. Uh, that's per location per trap, just to give you an idea of the of the population. And these are the two species side by side. Uh, so beet armyworm and fall armyworm. Uh, again, fall armyworm, uh, they'll continue to increase very rapidly. Beet armyworm usually is the first insect we see that increases uh, pretty rapidly, then slows down, and then the fall armyworm takes over as they move on from grasses uh, and uh, starts to infest uh, specialty crops uh, more and more. And those bubbles that you see on the maps uh, show you the intensity, the pest pressures uh, for these uh, insects and this slight variation. Uh, typically what will happen over the season is uh, the uh, as we add more and more locations, um, the hot spots uh, are more in the Southern Alabama compared to the to the north, uh, and typically these insects will be carried with uh, the storm storms and other weather systems. So watch out. This is the southern army worms and uh, yellow striped army worms. Again, uh, you can see the caterpillars uh, how they look. Uh, these have those triangles on the on the top. Uh, so the caterpillars are fairly distinct, especially when they're older. Um, and southern army worm continues to be a, a, a pretty intense uh, and good flight. A lot of southern armyworms in the crops, typically around this year time, you'll find the larvae in, in cat, uh, the caterpillars are in, in bunches on crops. And, and you can see the hotspots are all over the state. So 
they are rising rapidly. Um, here's the fruit worms and the tobacco bud worms. Uh, typically, the fruit worms are corn earworm. Uh, depends on what crop you're talking about. Uh, these we have pretty high pressure this year. And uh, just to show you some of the numbers to compare them, uh, and and again they are uh, increasing widely. They will feed on multiple crops, uh, and the bud worm typically feeds on row crops. Uh, we see them more on row crops. Here's cabbage looper. Uh, cabbage loopers again they typically start to increase towards the mid to late season. And these cabbage loopers, as you can tell, these are in very high numbers, which means that right as you start to transit to your winter crops or fall crops, you will see cabbage loopers, uh, especially on the brassicas. So uh, there's pretty high numbers this year. So um, they they continue to be continue to be a major pest on our fall crops, but they will feed on on uh, on some of the summer crops as well, uh, and they have pretty several generations. Uh, these are some species that are drought indicators, especially the lesser corn stock borer. It's a major pest of peanuts, uh, soybeans, and some other crops. Uh, I like to put it in the monitoring system so I can uh, see the drought, uh, especially dry soil. If you have very dry soil, uh, these uh, lesser corn stock borers will rise, and, uh, and it is a major pest on many row crops. And then squash vine borer, of course, uh, we typically see flights start around March. And they complete about two generations, uh, one to two generations, depending on where you are uh, in Alabama. And, uh, uh, and, the, and the best way to, to counter some of these insects is to keep your plants healthy. That's, that's very critical. Uh, any stress will be a calling card for these insects. So just to kind of summarize, uh, these are the monthly moth catches. Um, and I have put a little triangle, a caution sign. So watch out for fall and sudden army worms. We are, we are seeing a pretty heavy flight of tomato fruit worms right now. Cabbage loopers uh, are rising again very fast. One of the highest uh, averages we see uh, of the of these species, and the lesser construct burr, which indicates drought. So there are patches, even with all the rain, there is a lot of uh, there's dry areas uh, where you may see more lesser construct burr. Uh, and then watch out for squash vine borers. And I have some general trends mentioned there. Uh, I'll just mention the last two points on the slide. You know that the pest activity increases with drought and damage increases with stress. Uh, you gotta remember that and scout your crops closely as the summer progresses. Don't just depend on these scouting tools. These, these traps are great, but they don't tell you what's in the crop. So you still have to look in the crops. Uh, there's no shortcut to scouting. Uh, again, this is just a slide to show you that the flash drought as you see on the right of your screen, that was from 2019. We had a, a very uh, sudden drought for about three, three weeks to a month. And that was very stressful. And I almost lost 70% of my tomatoes uh, that year. And it was very difficult to control with the heat. Um, and just to close out, remember there are other insect species like these aphids that you may see. Again, when it's too hot, they may, it may slow down their breeding. Uh, they're essentially cloning themselves, um, but you should see, um, and it's, the heat also slows down the, the predators. So, um, so just kind of watch out for these insects. Um, the potato aphid, uh, which comes in different colors, um, that's very common on tomatoes. And those cowpea aphids are one of the largest aphids I've seen. Uh, and those are on peas, beans, uh, plenty. And if you see those aphid mummies, these are beneficial. Uh, these are affected by beneficial wasps. So if you see a lot of mummies, that means nature is doing its job and uh, giving you some control. So we need to conserve these natural enemies. And then of course, sting bug species. Uh, and I have uh, left the uh, immature species, the, the immature stage along with the adults here, just to show you. And um, um, these are, uh, the most common species, and again, leaf-footed bugs are the ones that are most common. Uh, we see them all the time in large numbers in backyards uh, and also in, in my commercial, uh, in my large fields. For control, um, we have the uh, vegetable crop handbook, which is updated annually. 
We have also updated the slide charts. So we also have updated the organic vegetable slide chart uh, and the uh, IPM toolkit. And you can get these from an extension event near you or email and, and we try to mail them out um, as fast as you can. And then of course the Farming Basics phone app has all the link that are needed um, uh, and, and that uh, are available to, to farmers. We have also linked the chill hours uh, for peaches, enterprise budgets, um, the online Farming Basics online courses linked there. So a lot of new, new things are added uh, in tools. Uh, the podcast, Farming Basics podcast is available on social, under social within the app. Uh, and you can connect directly to the extension agent with using the app. So lots of different features that make it convenient. 